couple rides in a flat bottom boat. Hook it up to the truck, got a hot date with a fishing hole. Got a nice chest, well it's empty right now. Grab a 30 pack, fill it up, I sit down. Back the boat down the ramp, ease her out through the no way zone. Well there ain't no better way on a Saturday to drift away from reality. Drown your night. Another line There we go. Hey, hey. Hey, let's get back to where we're at. All right, let's try this again, all right. All right, so. Wow. Uh, let me get this thing going, and we'll be ready to rock. Sorry about that. I don't know what was up. Let me uh, get this thing situated. All right, yeah. So hopefully you guys, uh, it's way too loud. I can tell you that. So starting us down a little bit. Sorry guys for the inconvenience. We are good. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, man. I don't know what's that. I, the camera just decided to get rid of. We're running these things through the camera, and anyway, we're back. Sorry, um, everything is good to go. Um, again, sorry for the delay. Um, welcome to. On to the line, season two, episode eight or nine, I believe it's nine. Um, first and foremost, uh, Josh and I coming to you at the local uh, Ohio River. Um, not, not, not true. I thought you'd say local watering hole, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, that could happen too. So again, um, I apologize for that stuff because it we. Wow, um, it's just one of those things. You know, it is. Uh, worked. I sat here for an hour, worked on this thing, worked great. Go live. Nope. But anyway, I'm um, glad you guys are joining us tonight. We have a huge show for you guys coming on. We had a bunch of people hit us up with some um, messages left. Uh, you know, seems like crazy amounts of messages about um, adding the um, or adding their their video or their photo to our show tonight, which is amazing. And that's always that's always a good thing there. Um, and I want that to continue. So anytime that you guys want to see your face or a capture you know a um you know a moment that you guys caught on the water we will definitely have you on the show so we have several uh people to bring think, in there uh, 20 uh, 22 i think mark kicky got you on know, 75 inch boys there we go all right My so head must be massive on that thing <laughs> i can't <guarantee. laughs> we got like two big nuggets up there is all he can probably see caesar's creek man i hear i see I cedar creek is that caesar's creek or cedar it's probably creek. cedar Season. I don't know either one. I hear God, that it was on fire. Hey, <laughs> I hear it was on fire. So again, what we're gonna do today? Again, guys, if you're on YouTube, I see four people out there. Um, I can see your comments here. Josh is on YouTube or on Facebook. So if you guys want to comment there, here in about five or so minutes, we're gonna bring Alex Rudd on. Alex Rudd, guys, is a hammer. This guy catches them. He's got. Um, last time I checked, over 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Got a huge following on all the social media sites. So if you're tuning in to check him out, he will be here in just a second. So, again, sorry for the little bit of a miscommunication there. I don't know what's going on. But uh, Josh uh, got us a couple goodies here in the past couple days from one of our sponsors, um, the Rod Glove. Um, and we're going to talk to you guys about it. We're going to give three of those things away tonight. We're going to give one well, – actually, let's do let's do two of them away the way he's talking about, and we'll give one of them away via share. So if you share this, uh, last week we had – or two weeks ago, we, Donnie Turner shared a ton. He had like 50 shares or something on there. Uh, he, he, he ended up winning the hat for his son, Caden, so it went to a good cause. Um, so we're going to change the rules up a little bit. You can share it as many times as you like, but um, we're only going to enter you if you share it different places. You share it to your uh, – your uh, Facebook page 20 times, people no more people are going to see it than those people. So if you share it to groups, that's fine. 
please don't spam our stuff everywhere. Um, if you think people would like to see us, share the stuff. Oh, I'd yeah, appreciate definitely. it because we don't want to – we don't want to be that guy where everybody sees it, you know, blowing everybody up. So if you guys want to share us out there, we'd appreciate it. So Josh will show you here. We got a couple uh, rod gloves for you. That's actually green, uh, <laughs> but where we have a green screen back here, it's uh, yeah, it's looks green. it's green and black. And then this one is uh, gray. That's a spinning reel. Um, this here is a um, that was for the bait or like a bait caster rod. So uh, we'll give away, and whoever wins first, we'll let you pick that. Uh, we're going to do a little different here in a minute. Make sure you share it out. But we're also going to pick a number. Me and Tyler's going to write a number down, and you guys are going to comment a number. And whoever is closest will win it, and we'll ship it or meet up with you if you're local either way. Uh, don't matter to us. Yep, so uh, that's the deal. Uh, like I said, we got a little paper and a pencil here. I'm going to write down a number between probably 1 and 100, depending on how many people are on here, and then we're going to see that. So we'll wait till Alex gets on here and get some of his followers on here. But, again, we're going to give one of these things away – by shares, shares only. If you share it to as many groups as you want, uh, share it to your page, a bunch of groups, that's fine. You'll get entered every time you do that. Again, you need to share it to different places every time. Uh, that way we see more people. Um, first off, I want to tell you guys, I am 30, uh, let's see, was it 39 subscribers away from 1,000 on YouTube. So if you guys don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel and you're watching out there, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Um, I've been working on this thing for several years, but I'm just now starting to get into the point where I really want to get after it. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to produce content as good and as much as possible, so I want to make sure that you guys understand that I do have a YouTube channel, and it is out there for your viewing pleasure. Um, so again, uh, we're going to give one of the rod gloves away, um, and that will be the one that the other two guys don't pick. So we have a spinning rod one and two bait caster um, standard rod gloves are going to give those things away are super nice um so we're going to in just a minute when we tell you we're going to say pick a number between one and whatever um and then the one that's closest after a few minutes we will um we'll give it away to you and if you're local we are going to uh, meet up with you if not then we'll uh we'll ship it to you no big deal so there's going to be three winners um i guess potentially could be we may we maybe maybe throw some jb's fish sauce we get a lot of yeah, um, we, we get a lot of shares. JBs out there too. Yeah, um, we are a little bit uh, stocked up right now. We uh, when we order JB's fish sauce, <laughs> we order JB's fish sauce, guys. Yeah. Like legitimately, this thing is loaded, chock full of JB's fish sauce. So, um, go big, go home, baby. Yeah. That's where we go, right? So yeah, so uh, JB's fish sauce. Want to give a shout out to Jim Block out there. Um, JB's fish sauce dot com. Definitely check that out. Um, before uh, we go any farther. Want to thank uh, Odyssey Battery, Rod Glove, um, Jim Block at JB's Fish Sauce, uh, and you know these people help us time and time again to um, to keep the show going. Lure Lock, uh, Lure Lock is new that come on here. So, uh, without nice. further ado, guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in. Uh, I'm gonna text uh, Alex. Josh is gonna call him. We're gonna bring him in. Make sure that we can hear him. Um, that way, we got everything going on. Uh, I'm going to mute the surface here until we get him on there. I'm going to text him. Um, and we're going to start talking about um, some, some pre-spawn stuff. So, again, guys, um, if you're on YouTube, uh, stick around. If you know Alex, I appreciate you guys joining us here. As soon as we get Alex on, we're going to, yeah, just go ahead and you should be able to. Yep, so we're going to call Alex to get him up here, but until then, you're going to see my oh, ugly look at, face. Look at that mug. <laughs> well, they can't see that. So. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, so we're calling Alex right now. Uh, looks like we're getting ready to make connection. He's uh, he's going to be. There we go. We're getting connection here. We'll wait till we get some audio. But, again, thank you guys for joining us here tonight on Another Line. There he is. There's Alex Rudd right now. So yeah. we're going to. Can you hear us now? Can you hear me? Yeah. We got you. Uh, Let's make sure that's uh, right out there. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's Nate check. says he can't hear me that well. Let me try to do this. Uh, a little better, Nate. We can, uh, so I'd say the issue is right here. Let's do this. Again, guys, I had I switched everything around yeah. on this thing. Um, so maybe check. I'm just not talking very loud today. Maybe. Um, so, uh, Alex, can you hear us back there, man? I can, I can. Sweet. So let's get you. Spectacular beard, by the let's way. Get I you, might add. Let's get him pulled in here, guys. Oh, um, first and foremost, 
This is the one Mr. Alex Rudd, the uh, phenomenal bass fisherman. He is a content creator as well. Um, I've been lucky enough to know Alex from uh, the Angler Expert Crew. I met him at a retreat that we went to, I guess it's been about three months ago, two and, two and a half months ago now in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. um, super nice guy. The beard was about, I don't know, inch and a half shorter than that. Uh, last time I saw him, but he's got the uh, he's got the thing going on. Uh, he's a YouTuber. Uh, he's also on all your popular social medias: uh, Instagram, Facebook. He just actually started his Facebook uh, page the day that I met him, pretty much. But mm -hmm. uh, you can mm -hmm. definitely follow him out there at. Um, let's just put it up here on the screen because I'm crazy like that. There we go, uh, Alex Rudd fishing. So um, you know, I ask Alex to be a part of the show today just to uh, really talk about. Um, it's a tinder worm. Yeah, oh. man. Like, <laughs> I I have to say that that was probably one of the most classic edits I've ever done in my life. Yeah. For those of you guys that didn't see that, um, I threw on the old Nintendo Power Glove on a photo that he had, and it just worked out super perfect. So, <laughs> so Alex, uh, without further ado, I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself to our viewers and people that know you. Um, if not, um, we'll we'll get on with it after that. All right. Well, cool. Well, hi. My name is Alex Rudd. Um, I own and run Alex Rudd Fishing on YouTube. Uh, that's kind of how I got my put into the industry and, and where everybody knows me. Um, been doing that now for about probably three, three or four years. Um, really, really enjoy it. I mean, it's awesome. I never thought that having a YouTube channel would amount to anything. You know, when I started it, it was just a, a hobby and it has slowly turned into, um, without giving too much away, because <laughs> I've not made the announcement just yet but it'll probably it'll probably end up be what i do for a living which is really really cool so i get to you know fish for a living and, and do that and do content creation but yeah it's, it's awesome to be on here that's cool man like i said uh, i think that's pretty much everybody's dream that's probably watching a show or has you know even if you're not a create content creator you're watching a show because you love to fish um so and that's that's awesome man uh obviously not to throw the only thing that i don't know out there but that's awesome, man, that you got that in the works, whether it's happening or not. I wish you all the best, and uh, I think you'd be awesome, man. I love your YouTube channel. I've been subscribed for quite a while, and um, I'm sure a lot of these guys here uh, see your friendly face all the time. So I appreciate your content, and thank you for being on the show tonight. Absolutely, man. Yep. So, um, you know, I talked to you last night about, um, you know, pre-spawn techniques. You know, we're in southern Ohio here. Uh, we're actually branching out a lot when it comes to our viewership we see people a lot of different places um the biggest thing that we're seeing right now is um you know expanded into your area tennessee yeah. west virginia virginia michigan we're, you know we're, we're slowly but surely like branching out alabama too the alabama area yeah so alabama so you need to yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I agree. So I, some hammers down there. I told him I was like, I'm gonna come down to Tennessee and we're gonna fish this summer. <laughs> he, he just doesn't know it yet, but I'm gonna make it happen. <laughs> Jacob, yeah. hey, J Jacob said your face is hiding behind the beard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, he's just jealous. <laughs> he's just jealous. Yeah, I don't. He can so, only he can only grow woman hair. He can't grow a big manly beard like I can. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so take that, Jacob. Yeah, you heard that. That's right. so, so no, uh, like I said, we're in Southern Ohio, uh, but our viewership is kind of around this area. Um, first and foremost, I would like to tell you that I am 39 subscribers away from that 1,000 mark on YouTube, which is far cry from where you're at, but I am close to get that 1,000. It's been a huge deal for me to get there, so hopefully within the next few days I'll get that, which is cool. So, um, oh, but our, that's awesome. Our viewership is is around the area, and we're you know right now we're in the pre-spawn side of things um you know i went out pond hopping there a few days ago and ended up catching about a five pounder which was pretty amazing but um you know we look at highly pressured lakes around here and it, it's tough for us to actually you know you, you you're not too far from chick correct mm -hmm. yeah i'm about two hours from chick yeah so uh you know we don't have any kind of fisheries like that around here you catch five 12 inches and you've done something but <laughs> So speaking of pre-spawn, and you know, pre-spawn I think goes everywhere. It doesn't matter, you know. Obviously, it's different types of year types or during different types of times during the year. We will get that out eventually. But um, in your opinion, if you were to pick one bait, and I know this is the most cr crazy question ever, if you picked one bait 
to throw in pre-spawn, what would it be? Lipless crankbait. Without a shadow of a doubt. It's just such a versatile tool. Um, and I've caught so many giant fish this time of year on a lipless crankbait. But, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're fishing in grass lakes, mud bottoms, rock bottom. If you want to fish it slow, you can drag it, you can hop it, you can burn it. I mean, it's just such a versatile tool that it's it's hard to pass up. So, definitely a lipless. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. So, uh, what's your favorite color? Um, I like the Rayburn Red. Strike, I, I'm literally 99% of the time I'm using a Strike King Red Eye. Um, and I use both versions, either the two tap or the normal. Um, I use the normal earlier on in the pre-spawn when I got a lot of fresh fish. They're moving up out of deep water, moving out of those wintering holes. Um, and then it, the more we move on into the pre-spawn, the closer we get to the spawn, I'll actually switch up to that two tap because I feel like when the fish have seen a thousand normal lipless crankbaits, you can pick up that two tap and it has just a little bit different vibration it has a little bit different water displacement and hydrosonic signature and you can get some of those more pressured bass to eat um as far as colors raven red like i said um, is probably my favorite a lot of our crawfish this time of year they turn a lot of crazy colors especially when they molt they'll get a lot of oranges and like methylades on them and so it does a really good job of mimicking that and then plus you'll have a lot of um water influx so you'll have a lot of rain and so that brings the water levels up muddies up the water that red does a really good job of standing out so and then i'll mix in a chrome and blue um a chartreuse black back you know all kind of your normal just colors the things that you think of when you're you know trying to fish all those different water conditions yeah, that's cool man uh so you know i correct me if i'm wrong I've, I've been a huge fan of striking and i saw the other day that they're actually uh one of the um I guess, uh, connections of your channel there, which is awesome. I saw that you guys got a, got hooked up there with, um, or you've been with them for a while, but they hooked you up with some baits, but, um, yeah. Know, so lose and strike King are sister companies is what it is. So I work with lose and just since I have a relationship with them, I get strike King products. So technically I don't work with strike King, but you know, I got a good connection there. So I use it. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Um, so, hey, so, I got a question for you real quick. Uh, Mark Hickey, yeah, buddy. Know if you fish Cherokee Lake, Yes, sir. I do. What's your thoughts on it? Uh, it's a good fishery. Um, it is very, very pressured now just because of all the tournaments that have been going on there. Um, first, it was the Bass, um, the Elite Series guys. Um, then we had uh, several BFLs. We had an Open, I think, was up there. We had a lot of college tournaments. And then this coming, not this week, but next week, uh, the FLW will be there. And so a lot of that pressure being brought in on that lake, that fishery isn't huge. And so it's just put a lot of pressure on those fish. And they're starting to uh, do a lot of different things. They're not normal like they used to. You know, used to this time of year, you could go down the bank with a bandit and a lipless and an A-rig and just crush them. And now they're wanting to stay out deeper. They're a lot more, you know, open water fish. So it's a good lake. And there's a lot of big smallmouth in there. Some of the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught in my life have come out of that lake. But it's just very pressured now. Uh, yeah, that, that's cool. So um, back to my original question there. So can you, um, you know, you're talking about having the different uh, hydrosonic uh, profiles there. Correct me if I'm wrong. The two tap is tungsten, right? Uh, yeah, it is. It's a it's a tungsten ball. Yeah. So the other one is going to be you know lead or some kind of steel ball where you know it, I, it's obviously tungsten is a as a denser material we talked about that before so it's going to have a different vibration a different rattle in the water and i'm with you i think as we get closer to pre-spawn that two tap that it's almost it doesn't have as many rattles in it but it's more of a thump man i mean you can really mm -hmm. feel it i mean you can almost obviously feel it through your rod tip and stuff so that's awesome um so, you know, fish in Chickamauga down there. By the way, guys, I want to mention that Alex has his own um, signature swim bait through Beast Coast. It's called mm -hmm. AR's Big Sexy. It just came out there the other day. It's a six and a half inch uh, soft plastic swim bait, two per pack, 10 bucks. Go out there and check that thing out. It is absolutely phenomenal. So, what's that like, man, having a bait that has your name on it? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. When uh, Derek, the owner of Beast Coast, he, uh, he texted me, he said, hey, Want a signature swim bait color? And I was like, Pope wear a funny hat. <laughs> and uh, we got we got to working on it really, really fast. Uh, it was one of those deals. Like, I knew exactly what I wanted when he asked me. I wanted something that was going to mimic big gizzard shad. Um, and that's really, like, those 
Chickamauga Bass, Watts Bar, um, you know, Nickajack, all those TVA lakes, the farther you get down in the system, those big fish key on gizzard shad. And that's just what they want to eat. It's it's a big protein rich meal. And so I knew when I started to design that color, I wanted something that looked like a gizzard shad. And I think we did a pretty good job of it. Yeah, I agree, man. Like I said, I can't wait to get my hands on a couple. Um Walt, Walton Doyle said uh tell Ox he got he has some Westbrook guys watching. That's what, awesome. That's awesome, and, uh, man. That's Eric, Westbrook Westbrook supply company no, there. So yeah. uh Eric Moore says, uh do you use a oh, hold on. Do you use a fiberglass rod when you're fishing the lipless crankbait? Yes, I use a seven foot medium heavy uh, moderate action cranking stick. It's a G Rod game changer cranking stick. If you guys want to go check it out, um, yeah. It, so it's uh, it's the, I don't know. Well, I do know the exact blend, but I can't tell everybody. But it's a blend of Torrey carbon fiber, graphene, and then glass. And so that fiberglass uh makes it that you know really moderate action it bends almost down to the first guide so it's awesome rod that's awesome so got another question for you mark kicky says uh, how do you attack a lake like lake cumberland during the uh, spawn slash post spawn um so cumberland is is, is unique in the fact that it's, it's very clear and you know for me definitely during the spawn i'm going to slow down I want to drag something. Carolina rig is a great tool because a lot of the times with those lakes like Cumberland and Norris and all those upland reservoirs that are very clear, those fish will spawn in 15 foot of water. And so by doing that, you can't find them on the bed. You know what I mean? You can't go bed fish for them. And so I'm going to slow down. I'm going to drag something. I'm going to kind of figure out where those fish are wanting to be at because even in those lakes like that, there's going to be something that they want to spawn on. And, you know, whether that be gravel or that be sand or whatever, if you can find those areas, slow down, drag something through there, that's how I'm going to focus on it. Now, going post-spawn, um, where we live, you're going to go into the shad spawn. And so I'm literally going to go find anything that is hard cover, and I'm going to throw a spinner bait and a swim jig and a big swim bait, anything that looks like a shad, because you're going to get your arm broke. Because all those fish that have been sitting on a bed for two or three weeks are starting to move off. They're starting to key on those shad, and that's where the big ones are going to be. Yeah, it's uh, funny that Mark Hickey mentioned uh, Lake Cumberland. Myself and my buddy Kyle Malone will be down there in Cumberland this weekend coming up. For those of you guys interested, if you guys have bought anything from a Kentucky Shimano dealer or the Tackle Box, Tackle Box is included in there as well. Uh, here in Ohio, you are you could if you bought a certain thing, we we shared the flyer several weeks ago on the right. page. You go back and find it. This is the last week that you can get uh, entered into that tournament, guys. It's a free tournament for you. Only thing you have to do is go to your participating Shimano dealer, get an entry form, and have your proof of purchase or your receipt where you bought one of those Shimano reels or Shimano rods that are eligible. And you can come down here and fish uh, Shimano Owners Tournament with us this weekend, this Saturday at Cumberland. Uh, $1,500 first prize, and they pay back all the way to the 30th spot, I think, with either rods or, or money. So it's a pretty cool deal. I've been talking to Tristan Cobb on here, who's who's a, a stick down there. He's actually one of the guys on our show. I don't know if he's on here watching or not, but he's been giving me some really cool uh, places to try. So that so that's one thing that we've we've come about this show is, you know, not only meeting people like you, Alex, but other people that are, you know, all over the country. So... Uh, and that's what it's all about is learning how to fish, you know, one cast at a time. That's kind of what we're priding ourselves here on at, on another line. Mm-hmm. So, um, so water temperature obviously plays a big factor in spawning. Do you believe that, uh, I asked this to, uh, Lefebvre and he kind of skated around the answer. I think he, he answered it, but not quite to my liking. I, I just want to know everybody's opinion. Do you think a, the moon phase has something to do with starting them to spawn? Or do you think it's strictly water temperature? Length of the days. In my opinion, the longer the days get, the more apt they are to spawn. Now, obviously with the length of the days, you get increased in water temperature. So they kind of play hand in hand. Um, but I believe that those fishes, so a, a bass's brain is a pretty simple thing. It's about the size of your thumbnail, and more than 90% of it is made up of uh, vision. So almost n- over 90% of their brain is totally goes to their eyes and what they see and how they perceive things. And so those bass, their instincts are going to tell them when the days start to get longer that it's time to start to move up and spawn. 
Now, I do believe the moon phase can play into that because when you have a full moon, guess what? You have a longer period of light. But I think with moon phases that oftentimes weather can be a big factor in that because if you have a, a period of cloudy days or a cloudy night, you're not going to have as much moon versus if you have a period of cloudy days, it's still sunlight outside. You're still getting that drastic difference between day and night. And so I believe that the length of the days are what really play into getting those bats to move up and spawn. Uh, I think that's a great uh, thing. And that, that's kind of my thing, too, about what it comes down to. Uh, I think it's linked to days and water temperature. I mean, the, like you said, because it all depends on, you know, the way Mother Nature, like, sets it up. Is it uh, going to be a really clear week? You know, if you have 75-degree days for two weeks and it really warms the water up, you know, you're going to have some serious action as as opposed to, like, right now, We've had a couple 70 degree days here in Ohio, but um, according to my watch here, um, it's 53 degrees still at eight o'clock, which is pretty good. But you know, even at 50 degree nights, I think uh, somebody said a local lake here uh, for people guys are local. I think Yatesville was 54 degrees this weekend. Um, Nate Witt can actually uh, vouch for that because he was the one that told me 54 degrees. Vesuvius was 53 to 55. So I mean, we're right there in that pre-spawn. They're going to be hitting the beds here anytime. Usually, it happens around May uh, for us. So we got a few more weeks, depending on the weather temperature, what's going on. So, all right. So we'll stop you there, Alex, for just a second. We'll ask you some more questions in just a second. So here's the deal, guys. We got about 40 people online. Uh, we're going to continue on with Alex in just a second. But we're going to give away one of these rod gloves. Uh, only wow. thing you have to do uh, is. Um, obviously share this post if you would, but in the next five minutes, so we're going to time it here. Um, so we'll wait until it goes to eight ten. So we'll go, we'll just go to eight fifteen. Um, we're going to com- I'm going to write down a number here. Um, actually Josh will write it down. Um, one, two, let's do, we got, uh, we got 24 people on there. Some people, uh, if you're on YouTube, you can, uh, definitely, uh, you can, um, guess as well. So, Pick a number between 1 and 100. The closest one to get the right answer or getting it in the next five minutes, uh, we're going to give it to you. Uh, so Josh number. has a number picked here on the um, the pad. So comment down below your guess. You have until 8.15 Eastern Standard Time. We'll figure out who has the closest guess, if not uh, the right answer. If you're local, we'll bring it to you or we'll meet you somewhere. And if you're not local, we'll ship it to you. This is compliments of uh, somebody working with the rod glove. So Go ahead, guys. All right, Alex, back to you, buddy. Is there anything that uh, that's pressing you that we may be able to answer? Hmm. I don't know. I never fished in Ohio. I was fishing in Ohio. I've, I, from what I've heard, it's not very good. <laughs> uh, no, you've heard right, man. Like like I said, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, 100% truth. So Ohio, fishing in Ohio is like the armpit of America. Oh, yeah. Okay. Unless, unless you get, obviously, up north around, uh, you know, Mosquito Creek Lake's a decent lake. Uh, lake Erie, obviously. Um, you know, you can get up there and catch them. But um, Ohio, you know, doesn't have the greatest lakes on the planet, which is weird, man. From where we live, we live in what's known as the tri-state area. So I can be, um, obviously, in Ashland, Kentucky in two minutes, and I can be in Huntington, West Virginia in about 15 minutes via car. So we're we're really close to everything here as far as three different states. And the thing about this is, is there's nothing to fish here, yet there's so many people that like to fish. Like, for example, one of the, the show sponsors here, the Tackle Box in South Point, Ohio, they do a thing called the Open House, which is uh, right around um, Valentine's Day every year. There was like a 1,000 people through the door there in two days. It's pretty crazy. Really? Yeah, so... If you look back, uh, well, I mean, if you look at, the, I'll have to find it and send it to you one day, but, uh, you know, they fished the classic here at the uh, Three Rivers there in Pittsburgh, and mm-hmm. KVD, they interviewed him one time, and they're like, hey, uh, Kevin, what's your favorite place to fish? He said, absolutely, by, without a shadow of a doubt, it's going to be St. Clair, and uh, with St. Clair, because you can catch him at any point, um, and at any point, you know, during the year you can catch them. However, he said, and so he said, okay, that's cool. So what's your fa- your least favorite place to fish? And he said, absolutely, the Ohio River, which you get KVD knocking on it. It's pretty bad. Yeah, I, w- I, I, definitely, I definitely say so. I've heard that up there too, I, I don't, I mean, obviously I don't live there, but I had someone else tell me that lived there that like the Ohio uh, – Fish and Wildlife Service doesn't do a tremendous job of, of keeping your 
resource very uh, healthy and like they don't stock a lot of bass and stuff. Is that true? Uh, man, to be honest with you, I've never seen anybody. F- they they stock trout on occasion, <laughs> but that's for like uh, you know sport fishermen where they'll have. We do some really cool things around here called like wheeling sportsmen where we have you know handicapped outdoorsmen. Uh, and women, they're out there, and we they stock a bunch of rainbow trout in local lakes so they can, you know, catch them. But, you know, the, in my opinion, I would much rather them see see them stock a sustainable species because trout are going to die. The, the water's going to get hot. They're going to die. There's a reason they don't live in those waters. Um, they're easy to catch when they're hatchery raised, so that's why they put them in there. They're probably cheap. But literally, other than when they drain a pond or drain a lake, I've never seen them restock lakes in my life. Um, and hmm. I could be, yeah. I could be wrong. I fish a ton and I can't say that I've seen that in Kentucky or West Virginia either. So maybe it's just stuff that they do during the springtime when I'm not there or I've never seen it. But I, I have, I will say that I've seen a DNR boat on Rocky Fork and they were doing a, uh, a survey right. doing, they were doing a shock survey. So they were shocking the fish up, doing, doing the average of, you know, the sizes and stuff, but I've, n- I've never heard of them actually putting fish back in, which is something I think that as you know sportsmen in this area we should try to find out what's going on there how much are they doing that how much of our um you know they did just now which is cool i think ohio just made it to where we can buy a three five ten year license as well as a lifetime license which i think the lifetime lifetime license is like 420 dollars or something for us which in the grand scheme of things Dang, that's cheaper than ours yeah so if my ours dad like 1800 bucks wow 18 yeah. for a lifetime yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I what do you pay a year? Uh, I paid fifty eight this year. Fifty eight. Yeah, yeah. Our, ours, ours is 19, 19. Yeah, 19. 19 bucks. Uh, so yeah. maybe that's what maybe that's why we don't have that good of a idea in our service. But uh, Nate says they stock Yatesville every few years. Carl okay, so they go to Yatesville. That's where all thousand people are fishing. <laughs> yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, so. We almost, almost got a winner. Yeah, got one more minute, guys. You guys can, uh, you know, if you haven't joined, if you're just not joining in, we're giving away a rod glove. You got one minute to <laughs> guess the number between one Five and a hundred here in just a second. Um, so we're going to ship that thing or give it to you. So uh, you know, only thing you're going to do is comment in there. Uh, we see you out there on YouTube land. There's a couple people in there commenting. Uh, Gabe Byrne, I see you out there, buddy. Uh, it's pretty cool. So another thing that yeah. a lot of people don't know is uh, Alex is actually studying to be a teacher as well. Uh, obviously, he said he, he dropped a bomb on us there a little while ago. He said he may be able to fish for them, which is awesome. But So it's kind of like we, we are, uh, um, you know, brothers from another mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, I am. I'm actually, I have about three more weeks, um, and then I'll be done. I'll be certified K-5, so elementary education. And I am more ready to be done with this than I've ever been ready to be done with something in my whole entire life. <laughs> I am, I'm so wore out with it. But, yeah, it's, it's looking like um, if everything works out, I'll probably, uh, probably do content creation instead of teaching, which it kind of makes me sad a little bit. But all at the same time, I'm, I'm excited about it. So. Yeah, but, I mean, I think that kind of plays into it. Like, you are teaching people, though, right? You're just not going to be in the <laughs> elementary education. Okay, hold on. I gotta introduce Bobby. Bobby's been trying to get this room for me since Bobby. I started. Bobby, uh, what's up, Bobby? What's up, hey? Bobby? Hey, you hang out with me in here, bud. Fat cat. It. Did Fat Cat Newton uh, name him? Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's up, Bobby? Hey, Scott Newton said you're about to get Newton. married, so uh, you won't be able to fish anymore. I am. Anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting married on June second. I'm I'm so excited. Two months today. That's I'm jacked up about it. Yeah. Beecher said you won't be able to fish anymore after yeah, that. Yeah, he said you won't be able to fish. <laughs> so that's basically what he's saying is when you say I do, that means I don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right, guys, so uh, the flash giveaway there is uh, over. Here is a number. Uh, you can't see uh, it. There we go, 54. Oh Answer 54, is 54. And so What I seen on there scrolling through – you had a 57, Yeah, right? Gabe Byrne, you were four off, uh, or three off. Donald Engel Jr., I think his name, let me make sure. He guessed 53. Let me go back here. Yep, Donald R. Engel Jr., 
You are the winner. Yeah, man. So Please, uh, uh, me- private message us. Yeah, unless or, if you're uh, local, either way, yeah, message either us way. Uh, either your address or uh, let us know you're local. Uh, congratulations on that. We're going to do another <laughs> one here in just a little bit. Uh, guys, if you're just now joining us, we have Alex Rudd on live here. Um, you can find him on all popular social media as well as YouTube at, at Alex Rudd Fishing. Oh. There's two Ds there. Prince heard talking about that. Oh, uh, yeah. I got my dog here, man. I'm about to show you. Prince. Uh, he, uh, yeah, uh, he said nah. I, he said I heard something about a dog. Oh, he, uh, he gone. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, we have Alex Rudd on here. If you can find him in all popular social media channels as well as YouTube, uh, at Alex Rudd Fishing, and he is a phenomenal content creating guy. And he, he's also a, a phenomenal angler and a good buddy of mine that I've met in a few months. So, hey, before uh, we go any far, hey Donald, since you're still in here, would you like the spinning combo or the casting combo? That way, you're first. You get to pick. Yeah. So. We got, couple of each but just to get the pick first all right um so alex i'm gonna throw down on i'm gonna throw down a product that you got to try have you ever tried jb's fish sauce i've not you got to do it I I'll say, to? Yes, yes dude it's <laughs> phenomenal um i'm so, a firm believer in scent i don't think a bass can smell as well as he can taste there you go but i think it's if it clamps down on something and it tastes right, it'll hold on to it longer. Hey, I agree. That's the thing. Like, that's, you know, I don't believe that. kind of like the way we are, too. Man, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I started using you JB's uh, fish sauce. I met Jim Block through through social media. I saw his product, started using it, and reached out to the guys. Like, hey, man, I'm, I'm a content creator. I like to push your product, see if we can come out to some kind of, uh, you know, deal. Um, he added me to the staff and, you know, it was, it was like a 10% di- a discount at that point, but I bought so much that I pretty much paid for his, uh, his, uh, mortgage for that year. Uh, and we've become really good friends. We text back and forth, but I'm going to tell you one thing, man, if you've never tried it, you got to do it. Um, it oh, has, yeah. uh, it's, um, made with ru- uh, real crude fish oils. So like you're talking about, um, uh, smelling it one thing, but I'm telling you what, um, <laughs> when they hit it, you better hold on. Uh, it's one of those things where, you know, I've caught fish that I wouldn't have never caught because I'll just be lollygagging around talking to my girlfriend or whatever. And I'll look up and my line will be halfway around the boat and a fish has still got it in his mouth. So, um, definitely check that out. I did scientific uh, testing too. You did? Yeah. We was at St. Clair and I made dad sit on the back of the boat and we put <laughs> the exact same lures on the, on two poles and we would cast them out by the same time and drag them both. And now I know statistics were made up on the spot, so get, get with. <laughs> but over seven times, out seven, seven out of ten times when he caught fish, it was caught on the one with JB's fish sauce on. It's pretty Same cool. You know they say eighty. They say eighty three percent of statistics are made right up on the spot. You know that. I know. I, that's why. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. But no, it, it was. It, he caught it, and that's whenever Dad started believing in it too. He's like, "Hey, yeah, right here it is." You know. So yeah, like I said, you, you didn't see it earlier, um, but <laughs> when we ordered JB's fish sauce, we ordered it by the case, bud. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. See, I think, and this is going to ruffle some feathers, and it always does. And this is a discussion that me and Ben Nowak have had with several people. I think smallmouth bass especially are very driven by pheromones and hormones. I think that those fish can definitely sense those things in the water. And, like, I don't know if you guys have ever been on a big school of fish and, like, if you get them deep cranking or get a school fired up, I've thrown fish back and the school shuts off. And I think that's because those fish put out some kind of pheromone into the water that's like, hey, this is dangerous. And instincts tell them self-preservation mode, and they turn off. So I think people who are using fish attractants that are using, you know, different kinds of types of fish oils and different types of pheromones are going to be a lot more effective than, say, something else. You know what I mean? There's so actually, there may uh, be something to it. There's actually a study or something I remember seeing about that, what you just said, that that's why, like, a lot of pros, like you see, like, some of the shows, they'll actually throw a couple in the box. To keep them from, and then as they get ready to leave, they'll throw them back. I've actually, yeah, what you're saying there, they've, I mean, that's a, a lot of people say that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm with you. You know, it makes sense. Um, you know, I see pros and other people, like, they'll catch a fish on one side of the boat, release it on the other. In my opinion, I think that's the dumbest thing on the planet. Like, it's the same boat, the same body of water, you know. You, and you drift. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you, you know. I and I've understand. literally seen fish go under the boat and sit in the shadow of the boat. Yeah. And then swim back over to where they were at. 
like yeah. I've seen it happen. So they're yeah. not that hey, stupid. Yeah, I mean they they do have uh, like you said the brain is the size of your thumbnail or or a small acorn. But <laughs> the thing about it is, man, they know one thing and that's to eat. And but you're right though; it makes sense to me. And I've never really thought about it that way. You know, we had Ben Nowak, probably the very first person that was ever on this show live last year. Um, you know, speaking of that, which guys, we are in year two of this show. I just showed Josh there the other day. I was looking at analytics, and and impressions really doesn't mean anything to us. We want to know. We want to get the the number of comments up and the number of people live watches. Impressions just means we've scrolled past somebody's page. Um, but we last year had four hundred ten thousand uh, impressions. Last year as an entire year for a show, we're we're at two hundred fifty five thousand already this year. So we're we're uh, really rocking it. We're we're uh, on. We're on a projected goal to meet a thousand impre- or a million impressions by the end of the year. So, thank you guys for that. We definitely want to throw a thank you out there because oh, yeah. without you guys, we couldn't do this. And and it, it's fun, man. We come here. With, Josh and I started this thing uh, last year as a way just to beat the winter winter blues, and it's turned into something that I could never take away or never go away with now. So we have people like Alex Rode on all the time. Had Dave Lafebvre on two weeks ago. Um, you know, we're literally two guys from Southern Ohio, and we like to fish. So it, it turns out pretty cool. And the cool and the thing about it is, America. yeah, we got to make sure we throw the armpit of America in there. Yeah, we've uh, we've learned a lot of stuff. So Alex I had a question for you. Uh, somebody said, um, let's see, what's your uh, most confident thing to fish? I guess uh, that would be baits. Obviously, what's your what's your? We talked about go to for pre spawn, but if you were going to pick up one Definitely bait, fishing well, lures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Personally, it'd be live bait for me—a big shiner and a yeah. bobber. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, like if I if I'm doing like pre spawn, I'm gonna pick up square bill. Just go pound the banks. Um, as we move into spawn, I'm gonna pick up you know something slow moving, uh, Texas rig, something like that, so I can cover cover water with it, still be slow. Post spawn, the spinner bait, anything spinner bait and a big swim bait. Bobby's going under the under the pillow. He doesn't want on top of the pillow. He wants under. It. Um, as we go like late post spawn on into like late summer, a frog, like frog is my late summer and fall bait. And then as we transition back into winter, I'm picking my crankbait back up and I'm going to work. What's what's your most confident bait? The one bait that you tie on, you say, I've got to put it on. Like if you're just kind of like one of them days where you kind of feel like you're struggling, what's the one that you swim bait? A what? An eight inch glide bait. Eight inch glide bait. Okay. Well, eight inch glide. Yeah. I mean, because like, honestly, like a lot of people are like, I'm not catching fish. Let me slow down. I need, you know, maybe these fish are pressured. I'm going to throw something small. Not me. I'm going to get the big bait out. I'm going to lock it in my hand because I know when one bites it, it's going to be a good one. Right. So. Yeah. I'm going to have Josh get up here in just a second. I want you to reach back there behind that thing. They can't see that, but I want you to reach back there and grab that bait. Oh, okay. So, uh, he talks about big swim baits. I'm afraid to throw it. Uh, this was hand painted by a buddy of mine and he just died a few years ago. Um, Scott Crabtree, he hand painted this thing for me, but this thing, I, I, I had that same mentality that you do. And I wanted to start throwing giant baits. So I was like, yeah, go big or go home. So, uh, Josh is getting this thing. It's wrapped up on uh drop shot. There's a, there's a, yeah, whopper plopper over there. So here you go. Um, I'll show Alex first. <laughs> wow, that's pretty, man. Yeah. So I mean, it's uh, it's pretty phenomenal. But it's just a big giant. I mean, the hooks on this thing are are huge. Yeah, that's some uh, that's some hardware right there, man. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm with you. Uh, I'm just now getting into a rig game, guys. I just bought an a rig, um, an IMX Pro G Loomis uh, a rig rod, uh, UBR. I'm super pumped to throw this thing. I, I don't know if I'll have it for this weekend, but at Cumberland. But I bought a. Uh, so, so I'm going to ask you that question in just a second. But I bought a um, a Yum Flash Mob. Uh, what's your What's your favorite uh, a rig uh, as far as like baits and and the rig itself? Well, the rig I can't tell you about. My second favorite rig though is a uh, Strike King Titanium rig, the one that's got the really flexible arms. Um, I love a rig that has a lot of flex to it. I like to get that thing pulsing and, and you know, really work in that A-rig and put a lot of action into it myself. Um, and then as far as swim baits, I like the uh, the Strike King Rage Swimmers, and I like the KVD, um, not the Caffeine Shad, the, I always forget what it's called. It's the little Strike King one. 
I don't know. They come with you can buy them like in a kit. You can buy like the heads and the swim baits, and it's like a squadron head kit. I love those swim baits. Those things are wicked. Um, but I'm always kind of fishing something a little bit natural. I feel as though even if you're fishing in dirty water, um, just that much presence in the water, it's going to get those fish, you know, to come off whatever they're sitting on and come take a look at it. But one key thing that I do is I find and make a target bait. So with the titanium rigs, what you'll notice is you have the arms that kind of stick out like this, and then you'll have a main wire that comes out the center. The main wire that comes out the center is just a little bit longer than the rest of those wires, so you got this bait sitting back there by itself. And so what I'll do is take some chartreuse, uh, like a chartreuse dye pen, and just put a few marks of chartreuse on the body and then on the tail, and it makes a target. And I have found that over the past few years experimenting with that, and I actually learned that from Mark Zona, um, that those fish, nine times out of ten, are going to hit that target. And he actually attached an underwater camera to his A-rigs and would watch the smallmouth. And it was crazy to watch them. They would like, look, 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 and then fire on the target. And so that's one key thing that I do with my A-rigs. Yeah, so like I said, I'm just now getting into the game. Uh, I bought a, um, like I said, a young flash mob there the other day uh, from the tackle box here. Uh, everybody, uh, they, everybody like, drools over the the hog farmer baits and all that stuff and I, they they look phenomenal but man 30 bucks for a rig not counting baits is i mean that's stretching it for me i think they look good so do you throw obviously the titanium rig does it have the will leaf blades or do you like the ones without i like blades and without blades it kind of just depends on what the fish tell me um if it's sunny outside though i'm definitely going to fish blades on that thing uh, it just helps to break that a rig up a little bit more give it a more as natural of a pr- approach as you can have to it it definitely helps to break it up a little, a little bit more, and I feel like you get a few more bites. Yep. Uh, Steven Chase in the house, guys. Um, those of you guys who don't know, I met him last week on the show. Uh, the dude drives a uh, the tour rig for uh, Justin, Justin Moore. Moore. Yeah. So uh, pretty legit stuff there. So, Alex, we got a question here for you coming from Matt Curran. It says, any tips for river slash creek fishing around the spawn? We've had a lot of rain here in central Ohio. So where everything is flooded right now, hopefully it'll be better here in a few days. Any tips for Matt? Current break, and that's where those fish are going to be at. Um, <clears throat> with that much current, a lot of them probably aren't going to be focusing on laying eggs. And oftentimes what will happen if you have a major rain event like that and the current doesn't let down, they'll just dump their eggs. They won't actually make a bed and spawn. They'll just dump their eggs, get rid of them, and that'll just kind of be a dead year for them. Um, but they're going to use current breaks. So whether that be log jams or boat dock posts or rock piles or something, just find something that's breaking that current, creating an eddy, fish behind those current breaks, and you're going to get bit. Um, a lot of times I like to kind of go through an area with a crankbait, and then I'll go back through with something a little bit slower and kind of hit key targets with it and see if I can get some bites. One of my favorite things is a swim jig. I'll take an all-white swim jig with a like a rage crawl trailer and flip it into – isolated pieces of cover that those fish can get behind and i've got a lot of big bites that way especially this time of year yeah so I, I got a random question for you and the only reason why is because i seen this on facebook scrolling through today is national peanut butter and jelly day mm-hmm. s- sandwich so what is your go-to food when you're on the boat that's mine and tyler's every time we're fishing we have a pb and j i don't know why but it's like He's like, why'd you bring him? Like PB and J. He's like, me too. You know, so that's like our go-to is peanut butter and jelly. That's the only reason I thought of this. So, what's your kind of like a sandwich or something you like to snack on? Uh, Cliff Bar. I love the Cliff Bars. The Sierra Trail mix is my favorite. And then I love just like peanut butter and crackers, man. I'm yeah. a peanut butter and cracker fool. I will munch on <laughs> like it, like any of them, like peanut butter and cracker, peanut butter and cheese. Like it don't matter. Or, I mean, cheese and cracker. Like it don't matter. I'll eat it if it's, if it's in a pack. And it's probably, like, bad for your heart. I want it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure, man. There isn't anything good that tastes good that's good for you, but what's the fun in that? Yeah. Um, so back to the creek thing, I'll give you my, my thing about that. One of the things about creek fishing and, and small stream fishing, in my opinion, is I find that people actually go too big for their baits. We talked about actually chunking some giant baits a minute ago. But something like, um, you know, there's a lot of baits out there. Rebel makes some really, really small, like, crawdad-style baits and stuff. Especially in creeks, guys, they, that's the forage. One thing, yeah. that you always hear match the hatch. 
Find out what's in there. Like, you know, up around Pennsylvania and some of you guys that are watching from the Angler Crew, uh, they have Helgermite, Hel- Helgermites in the creek, and, the, and there's some around here too. But some of those things that you don't think about are what these fish actually naturally forage on. This is natural forage. It's what they naturally eat. So when you say match the hatch, that's, that's you know, these fish eat for a living, literally. You know, yeah, yeah. They're, they're natural fishermen. They, they fish for a living. Uh, so they have to stay – stay on top of the game as far as keeping uh, nutrition and all that stuff up so they're going to look anything eat anything that that looks natural and they're not going to eat anything that's unnatural to them as far as huge stuff i saw a couple years ago that they were doing a uh that somebody shared a uh, crawled ad that was actually in falcon lake and i'm telling you that thing looked like a freaking lobster mm-hmm. yeah so hey, i mean no wonder those fish get so big down uh, there more kicky burners burgers watching us sorry mark <laughs> <laughs> Um, Scott says the uh, subway, nothing beats a sub. Matt, oh, hit the wrong button. Uh, Jamie Halleck always brings peanut butter and je- peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Wait a minute, you can't have bananas I, on a boat. And then Burl Gentry, that's my breakfast PB and J, Minga beef jerky. Yeah, that's actually it's <laughs> so, actually spe- that Mingas. It's actually called Mingies, I believe. Uh, Mark, that's, that's good. Hit me up if, uh, <laughs> yeah. if that's wrong. I think it's Mingies beef so, jerky. Are you a banana guy that don't go take a banana on your boat? Yeah, never. That's what I don't either. I am a true believer. Like, okay, yeah, it may be superstitious bull crap. It probably is. I believe in Bigfoot too. So here we are. Um, but anyway, um, I mean, look at though. You're loud. Yeah, exactly. Um, but no. So true story. It's me, my dad, and a friend of my dad's. We're fishing, dude. We're getting skunked, and I'm talking skunked hard. And like, we had gone up there the previous day and sacked up like eighteen and a half, nineteen pounds, right? So we're like, what is going on? What is going on? Well, we're fishing, fishing, da 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 da. Well, he sits down and says, I'm going to eat a snack. I said, All right, whatever you want to do. Quips out a Diet Mountain Dew and whips out a banana. <laughs> I said, get that damn banana out of my boat. He said, I ain't going to throw it out. I said, well, eat it and then get the pill out the boat. And he, so he eats it, gets the pill out of the boat. We pull up the next point. I catch a three and a half pounder on the crankbait. I was like, okay, the banana thing is definitely for sure real. <laughs> <laughs> and we commenced to whacking them after that. So. Yeah, see, there you go. I mean, yeah, so you know, I read a. It's all a, weird if it don't work. Right? Yeah, I read a thing in Bassmaster. If you, I guess it's been last year this time, but somebody had wrote in this article to Kevin Van Dam, and he was, she was like, it was a lady said she was fishing with her husband, uh, who was fishing this big giant. They were fishing this big tournament together, <laughs> so she packed this big lunch and you know and everything. And next thing you know, like. You know, he had pre-fished for for weeks at this point and, and was loading the fish up, and then she packs a banana without knowing, it, you know, that there was this quote-unquote superstition around it. And, like, she never told her husband, but, like, they never caught an entire fish, and then she starts reading about this, like, years later, and she's like, oh, my God, I think I was the reason he didn't catch any fish. <laughs> it's the banana curse. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, so uh, back to the pre-spawn deal. We Steven talked about your favorite. The devil. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we talked about your favorite bait. You said lipless crank bait just because it's so versatile. Uh, you talked about uh, you know the the red eye shad, which is one of my favorite, uh, and the two tap when it gets closer to the spawn. Um, so they rig. You're looking at that there. So my biggest thing when it comes to pre-spawn is I have a hard time trying to figure out where they stage. Um, you know, I, there's a lot, especially in our lakes. Uh, you know, most of our lakes are man-made. Um, and I, you know, obviously they're going to spawn in the lakes that we have around here. There's not a lot of upland reservoirs. They're not going to spawn in that 15 to 20 foot range. So they're going to be up there where you can see them sunning their bellies. Um, but I believe that fish are going to use like deep channels to get to those, those, um, spawning flats and stuff. But one of the things I've learned over the past couple months and even the last year is thinking about pre-spawn and spawn is that. Um, fish will stage on steeper banks closer to those pre-spawn areas because they, it takes less energy to feed up or down. They can just, you know, basically use their swim bladder to go up and down as opposed to have to swim somewhere to catch fish or to eat mm-hmm. bait. So what's your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. That's why 3XD, um, 5XD is such a versatile and good tool this time of year too. Bluff walls. Um, and bluffy areas that lead into spawning pockets, you know, shallow pockets and stuff like that are great areas. Cause like you say, those fish don't have to expend a lot of energy. They can move up and down going vertically instead of horizontally is a lot easier on a fish. And so being able to move up and down, feed when they want to get in deep water when they want to, or be right up on the bank when they want to, that's where those fish are going to be. 
So yeah, any any of that deep water access like that is is definitely key. Yeah, uh, Stephen Chase says he's had a lot of luck right now with flat sided crankbaits, and, and guys, I think that's the reason. The reason that is, is there's a di- way different vibration and way different uh, you know wobble pattern, if you will, if, if that's a word there from them. They they don't just dis- they displace the same amount of water, but they're actually going to uh, you know it it gives off a different vibration. Um, and obviously, with Alex here being a, um, you know affiliated with Luz and that stuff, I'm sure he's throwing he's throwing the uh, 1.5 flat. I'm sure, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I keep it tied on, man. It was a uh, it was a bait that was so funny when it came out. I got a bunch, right? And like, I just never really threw them for some reason. And like, they had been out for like four or five years. And then like, I picked it up one day and like commenced the freaking just whacking them, right? And like, caught them really good. And then I realized like how key of a bait that is, definitely in the pre spawn. Because those fish, some of them just get kind of funky. And they don't want anything with a rattle. Some of them don't. Um, and they want something that's moving and moving quickly. But they don't want like a jerk bait where there's a pause in it. And so like that flat side crankbait just gets work done. Especially in shag colors. Um, another one that I love is the um, like the old school like the balsa wood ones like if you can find anybody that still hand makes them and stuff like that there's actually a company that used to be around here called mimic lures and they would hand make those bad boys out of balsa wood and put little circuit board lips on them and i mean just wicked bait and it's just they're super light you got to throw them on a spinning rod but i mean I'm, those those baits will get munched when a lot of other things won't something about not having rattles in it i think is the biggest key to it Yep, there's actually a company here that's close to us. Uh, not really a company, just a couple brothers, I believe, that hand make balsa crankbaits. Uh, you can check them out on Facebook. I've never really fished in their stuff, uh, but it's uh, Crank Boys Balsa, yeah, I crank think. Boys balsa crank Boys Balsa Baits. Uh, they're handmade one at a time here in, I think, Flatwoods, Kentucky, which is about 10 minutes from us. So uh, I've been wanting to check them out. Uh, so if you're looking for something like that that's handmade, they, they have them there. But so. Um, we're going to ask Alex a few more questions here in just a second and let him get back to uh, what's going on in his life. But here's the deal, guys. It is, uh, we'll just say 840. So between now and 845, we're going to give away another rod glove. We're going to do a number between 1 and 100 again. We got uh, about 30 people going on here. The closest one, you know, if you go over it, that's okay. The closest one in the next five minutes until 840, we're going to give you this thing away. So I'm going to write my answer down here. Number uh, one through 100. So there, I have the number written down there. So, um, so we're, you know, back to the pre-spawn there with Alex. Um, the biggest thing, one of the things that I have, um, learned, and again, those deeper access from that stuff is, is not only in the spawn, but the post spawn is that I think that I fish water too quickly. Like, you know, I go up in those flats where they've been spawning, and if they're not there, you know, I won't, I'll pull directly out and I'll fish, you know, 40 foot of water from then on. When, it, and, you know, they still could be there. They're just maybe not as active yet, or maybe they're just now coming off the beds uh, and really not in that hunting mode yet. So, um, one thing that I'll tell you, and we'll get Alex's opinion in just a second, is, is don't be afraid to fish deeper water around, um, especially in the post spawn because fish still kind of linger around those areas. They don't just like jet out into 40, 50 foot of water right after the spawn. They're still looking there and they look for ambush points. So anything that, that can get them there a little bit of ambush point, whether that be like Alex said earlier, current break or a, a stump, something there that they can actually have some sort of cover to, to actually, um, you know, ambush prey you may have to make 10 casts at the same stump, but eventually you're going to catch that fish. So my, my opinion to you in the post spawn is don't be afraid to fish those spawn, spawning flats, but work your way in depths back down to where, you know, 25, 30 foot of water where they could be and, and spend a lot of time there. So what's your thoughts on that, Alex? I think, I think you've got kind of two, two different types of fish when it comes to situations like that. I think you have residential fish, and then I think you have fish that are more migratory. And so, like... I definitely, after, you know, going into post spawn, one of my favorite things to do is fish a frog and go flipping. And because a lot of those fish will stay in those areas where they spawn all year long, Um, especially as the water comes up more. I don't know if you guys deal with a lot of water fluctuation, but some of our lakes will fluctuate anywhere from 25 feet to two feet, you know, throughout the year. 
And so when those lakes are at full pool and the water's all the way up, you know, it can be up in the trees, be up in the bushes. And a lot of those fish will literally live up in those trees and up in those bushes all year long, and they'll never leave. Um, and then you have the other fish that are more migratory that will move back off. They'll get in 25 foot of water. They'll get on the ledges. It's when you got to break out the deep crankbaits and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think way too many people, and I think this has a lot to do with just the perception of what fish actually do throughout their life. It's kind of obscure. Um, and it's kind of been obscured just over the years by everybody, right? We've always been told, what's the number one thing you do in the summer when the bass are postponed? You go offshore, right? You go offshore, you got to go find them. When in truth, I believe that some of the biggest fish will live in an area their whole entire life and they'll never move more than 25 feet. And I, I kind of come to that conclusion by looking at some of the studies they did where they would actually tag bass and tag really big bass. And, you know, you'd have eight, nine, 10 pound class fish that literally never moved more than a 25 foot radius of where they were born. They lived there and they died there. And so, yeah, so I, I definitely like do not give up on areas really, really quickly unless the water gets drawn down or something. They have a reason to move away from those areas, but even then they'll find somewhere to hang out just right outside of that area. And then they'll move back up in there once it's stable again. That's cool. Uh, so back to the A-Rig question here. Uh, I'll ask a few more questions. I'll let everybody ask some more questions here for you too. But on your A-Rig, do you throw braid or do you throw uh, – are you throwing fluoro? 25-pound uh, copolymer. So I'm a copolymer guy. I got I love you. love so yeah. what? So what's your thoughts on, about that? I mean, why, what's your reasoning for that? Well, I think mostly it has to do with this confidence in it. I mean, I've never had an issue with copolymer, right? It's kind of the best of both worlds. It's like a fluorocarbon and monofilament mix. And the thing with most copolymers, I know for P-Line, I have no association with P-Line, but that's all that I use just because of pure confidence with it. Um, it's neutrally buoyant. So it doesn't matter where you put it in the water column, that's where it's going to hang out. And so you don't have to worry about it sinking. You don't have to worry about it floating. It's going to be wherever that bait's at. It's great for moving bait, great for crankbaits, jerkbaits. Um, it's got just a little more stretch than floor fluorocarbon, but not as much stretch as monofilament. And I just, I love it, man. I mean, it's whale rope. If you got anybody that's ever used P line, literally 25 pound P line, you could drag a boat with it. I'm yep, pretty sure that you. Stuff, you can't break it. I'm telling you, P I throw it in. P line's awesome stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, right now I'm, I'm fishing sunline, um, for, um, my fluoro, but I, I'm a power pro guy when it comes to braid. Um, so I wish Shimano would actually come out with a mono, uh, I've talked or a uh, fluorocarbon one. I've talked to several people that are super high up in the company, and they they pretty much said uh, not to put all my eggs in one basket. Uh, that it probably wasn't ever going to happen. They you know they have a subsidiary, obviously Shimano owns Power Pro, and that's pretty much what's going on. But um, you know I'm right now, like I said, just in the A rig game. I have I got that umbrella rig rod coming. Uh, I've got a big Corrado K. Uh, you know the 200 series you know holds a lot of line small uh, size reel again for it but uh, i'm i'm debating on whether to throw braid or or fluoro or even a copolymer like you're talking about and i think it's all about it's it's weird for me to think but i'm throwing 35 dollars worth of baits out on 20 pound line you know and is it going to happen probably not but you catch three four or five pounders on one man you might as well forget it well i, I tell you man Here's my deal with braid, and I learned this from throwing big bait. That braid digs into itself, and when you go to cast, and that rod loads and then unloads and it whips that bait, guess what happens? It doesn't matter if you're fishing 50-pound braid or not, it's going to break. Yeah. And it's because it digs into itself on the spool. And I've lost several $65 <laughs> swim baits by taking them and whipping them with that braid and having it dig into itself on the spool, and then it snaps, Right. So that's why I started fishing that copolymer, and like like I say, twenty five pound P line. You literally, if you break it, I will buy you five more A rigs. Like the stuff is literally unbreakable. Um, knock on wood somewhere. Um, yeah. But like that's why I started fishing it because just that little bit more stretch. That if I do get a backlash or something like that, that line could absorb that shock, and the bait falls in the water. It doesn't snap and just keep on flying because even with fifty sixty five pound braid. get them up that heavy 
and you take a thing and you whip it and you get all that power in that rod, especially when you're fishing a heavier rod, it can cause it to, to break off. Yeah, that, yeah, you're right. I never thought of that. Uh, one thing I will tell you, and I can speak for Power Pro only, is they have a new Power Pro uh, Super Slick v- V2, which is an eight carrier uh, braid. Wicked. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so, I love it. Um, and that, that smaller diameter causes you not to get that braid uh, digging in. So we've had this conversation before on this on this show. We'll just give you my rendition of it. Uh, if you think about braid as tires, uh, I want you to think as the four carrier braids, like your normal Power Pro, um, you know, P-Line I think has some. They're just four carrier braids. Think of those as like mud tires. They're there to get you there. They're rough. Um, you're not, you know, you're going to hear them going through your guides of your, your uh, rod and out your reel. Uh, but these new eight carrier, which means there's eight fibers that are all wrapped around each other or all braided, uh, they allow it to be a lot more round and a lot less, um, you know, the diameter is a lot smaller because they use smaller fi- uh, fibers. But with the new Power Pro uh, Super Slick V2, they actually have got that pattern a lot smaller. So the circumference or the diameter of that line is a lot smaller. So what he's talking about that that break, that digging into itself. If you you know if you use 15 pound and you throw a you know an A rig, obviously it's going to dig into itself. But if you use something that's you know 50 or higher, you're not going to have that problem anymore. I love it. So I actually got a spool of it at ICAST this past year, right when they dropped it. Or was it ICAST? When did they drop that stuff? Yeah, it was ICAST. Yeah, it was ICAST. yeah they, they I got a, take- I got a spool of it. I got some 65 pound, and that's what I used um, a little bit for this year for frogging. And the diameter is like significantly smaller. Like it's really surprising. I can get a lot more sixty-five pound on my reel, and like, dude, I was I was digging that stuff, man, because I freaking smack them. And I, when I smack them, they're usually back up in a tree and over two logs and <laughs> through Granny's front door, and I got to bring them all the way out, dude. And that <laughs> stuff, it's wicked, man. I like it. Yeah, and that's a, that's the cool thing about that stuff. Like I said, and the, the one thing that really sold me on the Power Pro Super Slick V2, um, I like the the Power Pro Super Slick. Uh, I use uh, thirty pound high vis yellow on all of my spinning rods. I obviously tie a, a leader on there, but the new collar that they have come out, it's black. Like, why do not? Why does not all companies that have braid make black line? You see all the pros and everybody Amen. making like making like Amen. like you know you know they take a black marker black and they, yeah yeah so super slick V two uh, Power Pro does come in black so Onyx black so go and check that out so guys we'll give you just a second here to ask Alex any more questions you may have what's uh, your, uh, Scott Ash says what's your favorite knot with P line. Um, I honestly don't, I think it's a double San Diego jam. I'm not really sure. Um, I got a video about it on my channel. You can go watch it. It's just, I learned how to tie it from Shaw Grigsby and I've been tying it ever since. It's an awesome knot, but everybody tells me when I tie it, it's a double San Diego jam, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I tie the same, same knot. Um, I actually have a, a version of it here. I'll show everybody here in a little bit. If you guys want to see that, you can check out my YouTube channel. So, uh, I think that's all the chan- all the questions we have for you, Alex. Uh, we'll give you an opportunity here to um, to uh, f- you know ask us anything or ask our our audience. But first and foremost, I want to thank you for yeah, coming man. on our show. It's been a, it's been a pleasure having you. Uh, we're running out about an hour with you on here, so it, it you know it's always nice when the, conf- the the conversation flows as nicely as it has today. Uh, we've had a lot of stuff going on, a lot of comments, a lot of people. A couple people have won some rod gloves. Again, guys, we're giving three of these away. We're getting ready to give one away right now. So go ahead. So the uh, the number is eighty four. Closest we had was eighty one, which was my boy um, Stephen Chase, I believe. Yeah, I believe so. Um, so, uh, Stephen, let me know where you're going to be, man. I can either ship it to you, or if you want to wait until May, I'll bring it to you to the church show. Or, I'm sorry, the, the uh, Justin Moore show. We've got one more question for you, Alex, before we let you go. Uh, Matt yeah. Coran says, what's your favorite freshwater fish to target, excluding bass species? Musky. Musky. All so right. he goes on to say, what's your favorite way to, t- he said, what's your favorite way to target them? My favorite way to target them, big swim bait. <laughs> Surely not. I figured out they'd eat. I figured out they'd eat an eight-inch swim bait, and I was like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> this is fun. Let's do this some more." So. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, Alex. So again, I guess uh, guys, if you're just now joining us, we have Alex right here on. We're going to let him get off here for just a second. If you guys want to go follow him, definitely do that. Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube for sure. That's where you're going to catch most of his content at. 
Um, he does have a Facebook page he just now created, so he's he's getting the, in the ball game there. So if you guys like that, go out there and share him at it, or check him out. Is at Alex Rudd Fishing that's there on the screen. Um, those of you guys just now joining us, if you are new to this show, if you're coming to follow Alex, we'd appreciate it if you guys would follow us here as well as on YouTube. Uh, both of them are at On Another Line. We appreciate it. So Alex. One day this summer, I'm letting you know. You see me now. I see you, and I see Bobby. We're a uh, Bobby. Uh, I'm coming down to fish chick with you, and we're gonna catch some fish. If that's all right with you. Yeah, come on down. You're more than welcome, man. I'm gonna have a. Uh, we have a lot of time this summer to fish, so we're gonna. We need to get on some stuff, dude. I got some really awesome frog stuff we can go fish. I got some big glide bait stuff we can go fish, and we'll just have all kinds of fun. Hopefully, hook up with a giant. Heck yeah, buddy. Like I said, being a high school teacher, one good thing I do get is a little bit of time off. So <laughs> yeah. I right. will uh, I will uh, get you around, guys. Uh, go follow Alex. Alex, I appreciate you, brother. Thanks for having us on the show. Anytime, anytime you want to be a part of it, definitely come around. We'd love to have you again. Uh, and tight lines, brother. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate you letting me come on, man. Y'all have a good night, okay? Too, All right, man. brother. Take I'll care. see you guys. See ya. All right, so and we back. and we're back. Up here real quick. Oh, I always do that. Oh, uh, of Too course. Too many clicks, man. It's, uh, I got it. Oh uh, yeah. All right. So anyway, so we've we've told everybody that we're going to do some uh, photos. We're going to throw up some photos here. Um, so we had like thirty some people. By the way, uh, guys, um, we are giving away. Uh, Stephen, uh, you That's won that rod glove, so. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter because we only have two casting left because yeah. uh, this is green. Yeah, oh, it shows up gray. Yeah, we we have a green screen back there. That's yeah, why it's, it's, it's green. It's green and black. That's green all we have. And it's a casting rod. So yeah. So uh, here's another deal, guys. We got one more to give away. Uh, we're not going to do that on the guests and the number deal. We want you to share this post. You can do it after the show. We're going to wait until Friday. That's what we always do to give everybody the opportunity as well as us to see what's going on. Um, so. You know, we appreciate it if you share this. Again, if you share it on your own page, that's that'll get you one entry. If you share it to other groups, that'll get you another entry. We'll share it as many times as what. Um, so we have, uh, let's see, uh, got going. Got we'll, we'll we'll give it away here on Friday. So what we're gonna do? We have Josh pull up these uh, uh, these Steve photos. Says we got to come down to fish with him in Tennessee and just bring it to the show. All right, sounds, sounds good, good, buddy. Man. Yeah, heck yeah, yeah we, we're gonna come. We're gonna. That's what me and Tyler, we talked about. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know for 100% sure if we're going to tournament fish that as much this year. Uh, we sat down, had a long talk, and uh, decided that we're going to try to push this show to its fullest potential as we can. And um, we're going to do a lot more content creation for his, for the, his YouTube channel. And we're going to just try to push, push, push this and just see where it goes from there. We are going to fish here and there. We're going to fish a few opens. We're going to fish a couple pedro we've talked about some ones we already want to fish but uh we definitely um we appreciate you guys and uh you know you guys are everybody you guys are the ones that push this show and we appreciate that so that's why we try to if when we get stuff we try to we hit up our sponsors guys all the time like the people we're affiliated with and like hey man can you give us something you know we're trying to you know because we want to give away and that's why we try to get discount codes to pass on also yeah uh guys i didn't have the opportunity to ask um anybody uh at lure lock um about that stuff uh we're working on getting you guys a uh a code a discount code for that so you know stick with us on that i'll we'll throw these up here just for a second guys so you guys can see it um my tag obviously is at on another line that's on facebook instagram twitter um i am on tiktok at on another line i don't i'm not on there much um josh is at buckeye fisherman on uh twitter or, uh, i'm sorry instagram um if you want to contact him, he is obviously an admin of this page, so send him a message on here. He'll get it the same as I do. So. And, uh, Christopher, we're from uh, Southern Ohio, uh, right around Ashland, Kentucky. Nobody knows where Colgrove and Arlington's at. So we always say Ashland, Kentucky, yeah. right across the river. But... We're about thirty. We're about three hours uh, southeast of Cincinnati, Ohio. Everybody's like, Cincinnati? Uh, yeah, or nobody, yeah, we're not so That's what we call that southern. But uh, yeah. the first fish we got here comes from uh, David Dave well. Wells. So let's get uh, it to come go. up. Got a hit. So super nice. Uh, looks like, is that a bonefish? Uh, I'm not for sure. I'm not an ocean guy. <laughs> Me either. So let's get these off here really quick so you can see it. So nice fish there, Dave. Appreciate that. All right. So let's uh, grab Casey another one here. Kelly with the Casey with the yeah. hammer yeah, fish. The I mean, fish a here. hammer. <laughs> Look at that stud. The fish is all right, too. 
Look at that dude. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next and one. Then we got uh, Alan Kamenichi. It's actually Alan Kamenich, but uh, we call him Kamenichi. He used to work with us up there. He actually transferred down to Texas. He's living down in the Houston area. So uh, cool fish there. And this guy here you see right here, I won't tell you his name. His name's David Weiler. But, uh, and uh, let's see here. We got uh, Danny Parsons with a nice small mouth. Hold on a second. Tyler Anderson's on here. And Tyler says, I bet you won't mark away put on in your bullseye right now. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. Don't look on my profile. Look. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I did my – my phone just vibrated. <laughs> yeah, so, guys, if you don't know who Tyler Anderson is, he runs Tyler's Real Fishing on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, you guys got like 120,000 subscribers. Yeah, go guys. check him out, too. We're gonna have, hey, Tyler, shoot me a message on here or comment down here below. Um, we'd love to have you on the show here in two weeks. What do you got going on there? It'll be uh, – find out what date that is. Um, let's see here. We'll go back here. Um, so, oh. <laughs> sorry. Um uh, Two weeks shall be the 16th. So the 16th, man. Let me know if you're available on there. Um, what's going on, guys? What he's talking about, the angler bullseye here, if you guys are not familiar with that, um, this is a um, something that goes along with the angler app. Uh, this is an add-on deal for – actually, let me uh, make it a little bigger here so we can see it. Um, running uh, 65 different ways a Sunday here. All right, so there we go. So this is the Angler Bullseye. Clips on your hat. Also has some uh, sticky stuff on the back if you want to stick it somewhere. Two-year battery life, twenty nine ninety nine for two years of use at least. You, you could get more. What this does, it allows you to pair this up with the absolute free Angler app. Uh, and it just gives you the opportunity to mark waypoints. One uh, press marks a waypoint on your phone. Uh, or, or a fish catch, sorry, double press actually marks a smart waypoint. So what I use it for a lot of times, guys, obviously is to mark fish. But if I'm running down the lake 70 mile an hour, I got both hands on the wheel, I can reach up and hit this on my hat and mark a waypoint, like if I see a rock pile uh, or whatever, then I can go back and look at that. It helps me out with pre-fishing, too. <laughs> it's, hey, it's Caden. I just shared this about 30 times. <laughs> <laughs> he want another hat, ain't he? Yeah. All right, uh, we'll get this back to these pictures here. Let's tell her. I'm switching here. All right, so. And this comes to us from Tim Heberlin. I actually seen him out there Saturday. And look at this. Look at this right here. The JB's I'm, fish sauce. I'm just saying, guys, it works. JB's fish sauce. All right. That was caught there. I don't know what he the weight. Um, Nate Witt got a really nice large mouth here. Uh, that was probably, I don't know where that's at. It looks like maybe Yatesville. Let's see here. And uh, Blake Johnson. Oh, look here. Uh-oh, boys, the hybrid run is about to start. That's a nice hybrid there. That's probably, looks like, seven or eight pounds. One of our good friends here, Matt Witt. Oh, uh, looks like he's got, I think this is when they went for a BFL, I think, maybe. I think that's what this is from. 100% Matt, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. And uh, it is uh, just a, Matt's a fine fella. You guys won't meet much better person than Matt. We we like talking to him, hanging out with him. Dude, that's pretty cool. I didn't know you could do that. I have some guys here spamming on a YouTube, so I just put him in timeout. <laughs> he can literally uh, put him in timeout. You're time. in trouble. <laughs> Go in the corner. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Well, look here, look, this is a cool picture. Don Parks. So it's um, a nice large mouth on some ice, man. Ice. Nice work. Yeah, I'm not doing all that. Uh, ben Mullins here. I think this is the one he actually um, went live, Facebook Live from. and. Uh, this is a couple weekends ago at Lake Vesuvius. Uh, he said, I think he said it weighed four pounds. Jordan Casey Garrett. Uh, we got a couple hogs there. Let's see here. Uh, Chase Sampson. Yeah, that's oh. Chase Sanson. He said he wished he caught some 12, 10 inches, but just just in <laughs> case he'll post these. There uh, you go. I think those come from Dale Hollow, if I'm not correct, or if I'm correct, down there uh, fishing. A, I think he's fishing a BFL event down there. So Chase Sanson works at the tackle box. He's also a Marshall student, fishes for the Marshall team. Josh Allen with a very nice bass. Yeah, solid there. That's yeah, a heck of a fish there, Josh. Nice work, buddy. Let's see here, Hunter Cliver. We got a uh, nice bass there. Let's see. Next one is uh, Juan Gomez and got some some fish sandwiches. Some stud so crappies there, yeah. Juan yeah. Gomez. Uh, uh, 
I'm pretty sure he's part of the JB's Fish Sauce he, team. Um, Blake Butcher. Super nice little smallie there. Yeah, I and uh, Matt Coran looks like he's got a, uh, a trout, right? Yeah. Yep, a trout. Uh, it's a trout. I don't know, know if it's a cutthroat. It might be. It looks like a, a pretty good rainbow. I'm not sure, but that's a nice trout either way. Steven said uh, Dale Hollers 30 minutes from him and Chick's 45 minutes from him. And you live right in the place. Yeah. He lives um, not, not the armpit. Corey O'Brien here. If we can see that pretty good there. Yeah, nice. Uh, uh, is that a spot? I couldn't tell. Uh, let's go back. Uh, no, I think it's just a little oh, large. that is. Pretty good chunk. I can't tell. There we go. Let's zoom in. Oh, that yeah. did not work. No, nope, you're zooming in the whole I'm deal. I'm doing something yep. crazy. All right. And then uh, let's see. Corey O'Brien again. That's a nice air. I don't know if that's. I don't know. I don't know. He's local, so that could be Yatesville or Grayson. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, Kevin go. Marty said he was jigging, jigging for, for crappie. Jigging for crappie and uh, got that <laughs> nice shovel head there. Get the net. I got a fish sandwich. <laughs> that's a fish dinner there. I guarantee it. And then, uh, uh, of course, here, our good old buddy, James Block. Yeah, James Block yeah, there from JB's Fish Soul. He's got a hammer. Look at him. He says, bam. Uh, I don't know what that is. Like, I think it may be a chicklid. I'm not sure. Somebody that's a saltwater angler, you know, name that fish for us. But anyway, so those are the fish um, that you um, – that you see, sorry. Uh, Did it again. They're, they're, yeah, they're, I'm wanting to end this show so bad. Yeah, let's just get out of here, man. Yeah. We've been long enough. Yeah, Got guys, so it. share this post. We're going to give away one more casting rod glove on Friday. We're going to share this thing out. Share it out as many times as you want if you share it out to, um, you know, whatever. Guys, um, we would we appreciate it, definitely. I am 39 subscribers away from having that 1,000 mark on YouTube. I know it's not much, especially to people like Tyler Anderson, Fluke Master, uh, Alex Rudd. You know, these guys are absolutely killing it. Um, you know, I'm doing the live thing, plus teaching school, plus doing the YouTube channel and fishing all and having fun all that time, too. So I appreciate if you got there and give me a follow. I'd love to break that 1,000 subscriber by the end of this week. So if you guys would care to share that so I can get those extra 30, uh, I think it's 39 I need. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. So it's 39. So until then, we will see you guys very, weeks. very soon uh, in two weeks. Uh, maybe we'll get Tyler Anderson. Apparently, he's off here. He didn't respond, or maybe he's going to mess with me later. Uh, we'll work on trying to get Tyler's Real Fishing, a.k.a. Tyler Anderson, here on the show, which will be a big-time deal for us. Um, and, you know, he, he's phenomenal. Uh, he's a collegiate angler fishing for Texas a and I believe. Uh, just picked him up a brand new skeeter and stuff. So, guys, we're an hour and 34 minutes into the show. We appreciate you sticking around after the first 10 minutes of mess-ups. But until next time, guys, my name is Tyler Waller. And I'm Josh Bryant. And we are on another line. We'll see you guys next time. Take care. You know, he... Full of Bass Pro, a couple rods and a flat bottom boat. Hook it up to the truck, got a hot date with a fishing hole. Got a nice chest, well it's empty right now. Grab a 30 pack, fill it up, I sit down. Back the boat down the ramp, ease her out through the no way zone. Well there ain't no better way on a Saturday to drift away from reality. Drown your night. Another